Hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about this really cool time tracking tool that I made. Uh, I had spoken with my friend about it and I realized, oh, I haven't made a video on that yet. Man, there's, there's so many topics I'd love to make videos on for you folks. Um, but, but here's a quick one, uh, just because obviously with, with my job and stuff, it's been tough to find the time. And that's what today's all about. It's all about the time. So, you know, when you're, so my day job, right, I'm working on uh, Call of Duty. And when you're working at a big company, AAA game kind of thing, uh, you've got a producer on your team who's there to manage your time. You know, when you're working on a task, they keep track of how long these tasks are. And, you know, maybe they even are doing some scrum methodologies where they're tracking velocity and things like that. All very interesting. But when it comes to the indie side, uh, often I found that I wasn't putting in the time to really understand how long these different tasks were taking me. And I, w I went through basically all the options I could find online. I had Toggle for, for quite some time. And I, I do recommend those systems if you don't want to roll your own, particularly for stuff outside of Unity too, because this, this tool is only going to work really for Unity. But I used, um, I used Toggle, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, toggle, basically, you turn it on and you turn it off. And then um, what's nice about that is it could be really for anything, and it also has an integration with the mobile app. And so that, that was pretty useful. Actually, I toggle 24 hours in a day. So basically, there was a period of time, maybe a, a few weeks, where every single thing I would toggle. So, you know, I, I'd have 24 hours of toggled content. So I would toggle when I went to bed. I would toggle when I went to go make a meal or have a meal or just entertainment or if I was working on my on a hobby project or working on my day job, I would just toggle on, toggle off. And I, and I had all this data, but I found that their visualization suite wasn't wasn't amazing and I wasn't really getting anything out of the time I was putting into constantly pushing that button. Um, rescue time I tried after that and it was a, a big improvement for me at least because what's cool with rescue time is it automatically looks at your computer. I don't think they have it for the phone. Maybe they do. But it would look at the computer and it would see what processes were you running, right? So for example, if you've got a process called League of Legends, it would automatically say, oh, you're playing League of Legends when you opened up that program. The issue with that, though, of course, was um, I think one of the issues I ran into at least was I would always have Unity open <laughs> and I wasn't necessarily playing it, you know. Um, so, so that was uh, that was interesting. So I, I think um, I, I think everything has its positives and negatives. And Rescue Time, I think, just went through a huge revision. So maybe their system's a lot better now. Um, you can see, obviously, through this little ad they have that like they've got this sort of AI executive assistant. Who can come in there and, and give you like tips and encouragement and stuff so, so it's really cool tools um i definitely want to watch the space in the future to see what people come up with but for for our sake today i've got a very simple tool which when you push play in the unity engine you just push play boom you get a pop-up um which will ask you hey what are you working on so this is a log that i've been working on it's, it's basically just a text document and it automatically creates an entry here. So it's currently 10.05 a.m. And so what it does is it rounds to the nearest half hour and it says, okay, today you're working from 10 a.m. to presumably 10.30. So it just assumes you're going to be working at least half hour increments. And within that uh, section here, it just says, hey, what are you working on? So here I might say, you know, I am, uh, I am updating the 3D camera. I don't know. Maybe I'll say something like that. Push save close it and then boom I'm done now I can get to work so it automatically handles a lot of the work for me which is constantly prompting me with you know um, what, what are you working on and when it just will automatically bring that up and so then when it comes to 1030 if I'm if I'm still working on the program and because it said remember it said from 10 to 1030 it's assuming that I'm working if I push this play button at 1030 then it will come up again, and now we'll say from 10 to 11. So it automatically pushes that time frame open, and it just it just updates it um, automatically. So uh, I, I should rephrase that a little bit. If I work from t to 10:30, it'll just assume I'm still working on the same thing. So it doesn't even prompt me. It just automatically edits that text file and changes that 10 to 10:30 to 10 to 11 because it doesn't need me to say that I'm still working on the same thing. However. I believe it's every four hours and you can tune this to your liking it will prompt you again with a new entry and it will say hey you know you've been working for at least four hours I assume at this point you're working on a new task so basically do you want to update the previous thing or do you want to start a, a new task entry at this point point?" and so um, and so, so that's useful in, in its own way and what's great about this 
is now I can go into my game here. I could pull up my visualization tools. And so here, for example, it's showing me all the hours that I've worked so far. So in this case, I've already worked 370 hours on this project. And I, uh, it's a little hard to see with the video, but I can, uh, on the bottom here, it tells me all the different topics I've worked on. So for example, I've been working a lot on Opsiv, right? It's a 3D program I bought. It's been a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm not very happy with Opsiv, frankly. But, um, you know, I've spent 78 freaking hours on that thing. Uh, so that shows you that you could also go into a graph view and you could see relative to, you know, the different things that you're working on in your project, how long has each taken? So, for example, I've spent 20% of my time working on Opsiv so far. Um, and now my current thing is cameras and locomotion and I've already accrued 6% or, um, or it, doesn't, it doesn't say the hours here. So about, let's say, 23 hours I've been working on that. So I found that really useful. Um, this little graph visualization is unfortunately not part of the tool. Trust me, I would give you this code if I could, um, but I had purchased that, which is why I can't give it to you. But it's from the asset store. Uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's just like, I'm gonna go just check the graph or something. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure all these graphs would work, but if you're interested in specifically the one that I have, Maybe I could go to like my assets or something. Oh my gosh, this little window is a pain in the neck. Just, and just in case you want to know the specific asset, I'll just show it to you. Um, where the heck is this thing? Let's go here. Here it is, it's called Awesome Charts and Graph. I think it's okay, I think it's probably a four star asset. Um, it's 20 bucks and um, I think it's pretty good. So that's what I've been using um, to, to make those graphs and stuff. And they have a bunch of other graphs too. So um, so that's really useful if I wanna come in the game. And at some point I'd love to maybe show that to the, um, to the user in some way, like to show, hey, this is the different features that I'm working on uh, and things like that. But it's really helpful just for me to know relative you know where i'm investing time in the project and stuff like that and of course it's very important for anybody who's doing freelance work to know what aspects they're working on so that they could properly build their client um if you are working on a per hour basis which um which is an option though honestly in game development it's usually you're billed per milestone which i think makes a little bit more sense than per hour um at least you know clients have a better judge of that but um, I think that's it. Yeah, so basically that's it. Uh, let, let's jump into the code a little bit so I can show that to you. Um, so I'm just gonna give you this whole script. It's called BB Editor. That stands for Breach Buddies Editor. And um, it does a bunch of things here that I have a whole bunch of like uh, settings menus and lots of stuff that I have there. But the important part is that down here in uh, BB Tools under log, you can open a new en the log with a new entry so you could force it to create a new entry. Or you could just open the log if you want. And you could see, you know, what have you been working on and stuff like that. Um, so what does it do? Let me, uh, let me pull this over here. So on play mode changed fires whenever you push the play button, right? So when the reason why it comes up when I push play is because I have basically a hook into this method here on, on play mode changed, which um, is that referenced anywhere? No, so I so it's it's just basically being accessed through reflection, um, but it's this method that's going to be called whenever you push that play button, and then it's going to check if it needs to update the journal. Um, so basically, it's saying is opening a new journal necessary? Here it checks against the player pref which I save of the last log entry start time. It does a little check here to basically see, um, you know, if I've opened it recently. And then it looks like here every four hours it prompts me to create a new distinct entry. So you can customize that if you want, little four there. Um, but if it has not been at least four hours, then it says, oh, it's not necessary. But if it is been four hours, then it will go here to open log with new entry and it'll pop into that. And so here's where the entry logic is happening. Nothing too crazy here. Um, we calculate the date and I format it to look nice in, my, in the format that I like. Then we have the start time, which is rounded. We have the estimated end time, which is rounded. Let's, let's look into that rounding algorithm. What is that doing? 
So it's basically just rounding every half hour. That's what it's doing. Nothing too crazy there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Then we go into here. So this is the end time. And then it shows you the last tag entry. Oh, so I should mention that too. So when I showed you this graph, when I was running the game, the, the graph, which was you know the different topics that I've been working on, the way that that is populated is I have a little tag on each entry to just say, what am I working on in that case? So recently I've been doing a lot of cameras and locomotion. Um, and when it creates a new entry, it'll automatically use the tag of your most recent entry. So, um, so that's kind of useful. Um, but in my case, and, and so, you know, so you'll have a whole bunch of different tags there and, and you can use whichever ones you want. And then it, it, in my, the case of my graph, I just group all the tags that have less than like 10% time into an other section because, uh, you know, if it hasn't been more than 10%, then I, I don't really care the specifics of it. Uh, so that's what that, ta that tag does. So we have the start time, the end time. And then uh, what else is over here? paste the entry so then it then it just uh, throws it all there and it puts the new entry on top so um, that's sort of a new thing I've been doing in the past I actually had a log where I would constantly add the new log at the end uh, just like a Google Doc right but what I realized was I was constantly scrolling down and then with a the Google Doc in particular it might take a few minutes for you to load the very last page if you've got like 40 pages for work um, I do use Google Docs I don't have an automated system like this. Every single day I go in and I write a little journal entry about what I'm working on that day. But the way that I do it there is I just, I always just write it at the top of the Google Doc. I make a line and that's my new entry, right? And that's super helpful because when you open up a document, it always starts at the top, right? So that's, that's why I add my entries to the top. So you don't have to scroll at all and you can immediately see, you know, oh, this is what I was working on uh, last week and this was also that day and also that day and then the day before that, et cetera. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that I've done here, this is sort of new for me, so I'm not sure if I like the format too much, but I've made like a little empty entry here just to say, oh, I was working basically the at this time on this day on whatever I had previously mentioned. So this is useful particularly, so I had like three, this was like a weekend or something, and so I just had like three entries that day. I just spent the whole day working on these cameras. So I just I just wrote sort of like an empty entry there so that I wouldn't have to write, you know, the whole the whole paragraph, the whole shebang there. So that was, um, that's just a perspective there. And at this point, we're really talking about nuance because there's a lot of ways to do it. Open log, what does that do? It goes to the utils.getLog path. So obviously you have to define that on your own. In this case, I just walk up a hierarchy from my assets folder up, 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 up to somewhere in my project repo where I have log.txt saved. So, you know, d do whatever you want for that. Um, the, the main idea here is this so, uh is this update logic here. And then so you could set the log to require an update. So that will say, oh, the last time you edited it was 10 hours ago. So that's useful in case you just want to, um, you want to force an update or something like that. But usually what I have here is like, if I, if I just want to automatically make a new update, I'll just push open log with new entry, push reload, and then boom, now you can start working on, okay. So for example, 10.30 to 11, what was I working on now? Um, I don't know, more cameras, something like that, bang. And then, uh, and then you could update that like that. All right, so that's it. That's the asset. Hopefully it helps you. Good luck, and uh, let me know what you think. Bye.